Hey guys, what's up? This is for Chinese Tech. Today, I have my review of the Meizu MX4 Pro. Now, this is the Pro Edition. It's a updated or upgraded uh, flagship device by Meizu. Uh, they released the MX4 Pro just a few months uh, ago and then later they have this new one as well which is the MX4 Pro. Now the main difference is that it has a slightly larger screen as well as uh, more powerful hardware uh, powering it. So uh, is this a good phone? I guess this review will try to answer that very question. So uh, before we begin, as always, we are going to go through some of the uh, hardware specifications. Uh, if you missed out anything or if I missed out anything, uh, do take a look at the full written review. There is a table of uh, specifications for this phone and you can read it uh, in detail over there. So anyway, we'll start with dimensions. It's 150.1 by 77 by 9 mm tick uh, that's for um, the dimensions and the sim cards that it supports is a single uh, micro sim uh, the networks it supports is gsm 840 900 1800 1900 megahertz for 3g network it supports wcdma 850 900 1900 2100 as well as td scdma 1880 as well as 2010 megahertz for 4G networks, it supports both TD and FDD LTE, uh, bands 1 and 1, 3 and 7 for FDD. And for TD LTE, it supports bands 38, 39, 40 and 41. So this phone will basically be covered uh, uh, throughout the whole world. Uh, you probably can use it with uh, many, many carriers. Anyways, uh, display-wise, this is a 5.5-inch IPS LCD screen with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protecting it. I do have my own screen protector as well pasted over it. Uh, the resolution this thing runs at is 1536 by 2560. Now you might think oh this resolution is kind of weird but uh, it's kind of like the Apple uh, retina resolution kind of ratio thing uh, but yeah that's 2560 by 1536 resolution display. For hardware, for the CPU, we have uh, Ex Exynos, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, EXYNOS, 5 Octa 5430, that's the Samsung one, I believe. And the GPU that powers this phone is the Mali T628, that's T628 Mali. Uh, for memory, it has RAM of 3 gigs, 3 gigs of RAM. And for ROM, uh, it comes with three different options. You can choose the 16 gig edition 32 or 64 gigabytes i recommend you to get at least 32 gigs because uh, it does not support any additional storage expansion so of course uh, if you want to have your music on the phone you know, take photos etc you should have at least 32 gigs now in terms of camera we have a 5 megapixel camera at the front and at the back we have a 64 sorry, a 20.7 megapixel camera at the back over here. So uh, it's one of the uh, better mobile camera and it is better. In fact, it is better. You can take a look at the sample photos later uh, if you wish to do so. Now, in terms of other things, we have uh, this This phone runs on the Meizu's own custom Android OS, which is termed as the Flyme. Uh, it's based off, this is running on Flyme 4, which is based off uh, custom Android 4.4.4. And uh, for wi wireless LAN support, it supports uh, BGN and AC at both uh, 2.5 gigahertz as well as 5.0 gigahertz bandwidth. Uh, the battery is a non-removable uh, 3350 mAh battery. So uh, if you took, take a look at my uh, unboxing video, you will realize that the battery looks a lot like you can take it out, but no, it's actually uh, a non-removable one. Uh, and it supports NFC as well. So yeah, that's for all the specifications. Again, if uh, you missed out anything or if I said something too quickly or, or pronounced it wrongly, do take a look at the uh, table, which will be in the full written review. And the link to that will be in the description bar right below. So we'll start off with uh, design and build quality. Now, if, when you first take a look at this phone, uh, the first thing that comes into mind is that it looks a lot like an iPhone 6. Yes, uh, I would say that it's heavily inspired. Uh, you can see like the, the grills, etc. You see over here at the bottom, 
right? Uh, this looks a lot like the iPhone one and the general design, the cutting and so on. Uh, yeah, it, it is a lot like the iPhone 6. So is that a good thing or bad thing? Uh, that's for you to decide, but I will say that it looks absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. It's very pretty looking. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. The design is really nice, uh, but I didn't like uh, how they have the power button placed at the top instead of the side. But uh, this isn't too much a problem because of the gesture waking up system, like double tap to uh, wake the system and so on, like like so. So I don't really have to access the power button unless I want to turn off the screen. Uh, so design wise, it's pretty nice. And as for the uh build quality uh it feels really good to touch now this phone is pretty lightweight uh much lighter than many of the other phones that i have reviewed so far and while it is light uh it feels that it's built very very strong and sturdy so uh yeah this is a great phone premium flagship definitely definitely a flagship phone so yeah uh and one thing that you should take note is that this uh the the power button uh, sorry, the home button over here is a fingerprint. Uh, there is a fingerprint sensor over here, so there are some cool things that you can do with it, which I'll show you later. And there isn't any capacitive buttons. Uh, it makes use of on-screen controls, and the FlyMe OS has their own uh, way of implementing the on-screen controls as well. So I'll let you take a look at that and discuss a little bit more about that. So, anyways, design build quality, uh, great, absolutely great. A little bit of an imit of an imitation. But uh, hey, uh, for a consumer point of view, I don't really care. It looks great. It's built well, and that's good enough for me. Now for display-wise, uh, as we said earlier, uh, this is a 2560 by 1536 uh, resolution display. So this is much higher than your standard usual uh, full HD display. Now, is it better? Uh, Let's just talk about general experience. Yes, it's very nice. Color reproduction is fantastic. Uh, uh, we have um, great brightness uh, level controls. You can use it under direct sunlight, sure. Uh, viewing angles is great as well. And it's great, you know. But is 2560 by 1536 better than, uh, if, let's say, a full HD 1080p display? Um, I would tell you that the only time you can see a subtle difference is when you actually uh, read text. You will actually find that the text is slightly sharper, very slightly sharper. And uh, yeah, that's about it really. Uh, so I do not really understand why uh, manufacturers are actually going for this higher uh, DPI or PPI uh, screen resolution. At, f at a certain point, you cannot feel any difference. And there are some drawbacks as well for a much more, a, a, for running at a high resolution, and that comes at the 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 expense of your your CPU, your GPU, etc. It's going to be more intensive, uh, resource intensive when you run apps and games, etc., which is a problem on this phone, uh, especially games for graphic. Uh, for graphically intensive games, so yeah, display is gorgeous, but is it any better? Uh, no, I would say immediately no. It's not better, but it is good, right? It's good. That's for the display. Now, phone performance. Uh, everything works perfectly well. We have your phone calls, etc. Very clear. Signal strength is decent, uh, but it's definitely the Wi-Fi strength is not as good as. Uh, my previous phone that I tried, which is the ZTE Nubia Z7, I think that's the best Wi-Fi signal strength phone that I've ever experienced, ever. Uh, so that's for that phone. But for this phone itself, the the wireless Wi-Fi strength as well as the uh, signal as well, phone signals, uh, it's decent. It's decent, but it's not exceptional or anything like that. And um, yeah. Uh, GPS locks within seconds, and once it's locked, uh, is, it tracks very accurately without uh, losing any signal, uh, any sudden loss of signals. Uh, so yeah, so phone phone wise, it works perfectly fine. In terms of uh, general UI responsiveness, uh, it is pretty good as well. Uh, there's no lag at all. Uh, all apps run perfectly fine. Now that's apps, not games. Okay, we which are separate both of them, 
apps runs perfectly fine. I, for example, I did use uh, this app, the WPS Office, and uh, it works just well. You know, you can edit documents. There's no no lag, no slowdown at all, which is fantastic. Uh, in terms of battery life, uh, the MX4 Pro is kind of weird. The battery, I wouldn't say it's fantastic, and it it kind of fluctuates uh, randomly uh, throughout different kinds of usage but on average i managed to pull out roughly two and a half hours of screen on time usage and after that i had about 24 hours of standby time now i must say this that the phone manages uh standby time battery really well when it's turned off it's it, it can last really really long but whenever you are using it uh, for any kind of thing, for example, playing games, uh, browsing the internet, etc. Battery runs out much quicker. And and it comparatively, it's much quicker than other phones that I've tried so far. So battery life on this phone is, is okay, uh, but it definitely can be better. And the reason I believe why the battery is so bad, sorry, it's not so bad, the battery is poorer, is because of the high resolution screen. So definitely need more power horsepower from the cpu as well as the gpu and there's one more thing that i like to point out is that the phone feels warm towards the top after some time of usage and uh, it gets especially hot or rather toasty uh, it's, it becomes uncomfortable but uh, not say it'll burn you or anything like that whenever you use things for very resource intensive activities for example if I was taking a, a, a video with the phone and taking some uh, photos as well. This part here becomes toasty and the heat spreads down. So when we use the phone for people who have sweaty palms, etc., you're going to sweat a bit. Uh, that's just one thing. And I believe this heat uh, generated kind of affects the battery as well. Because uh, if, you, if you read up a little bit on batteries, uh, temperature is a factor that affects the battery performance so that's one thing that you want might want to take note of is that the phone can get a little bit warm and uh but uh is it too hot that it burns your hand obviously not right obviously not but it can get kind of uncomfortable at times so overall the phone performance is great that's for apps and i'll talk a bit about gaming right now so for gaming i'll show you minecraft here uh, you see that the phone actually it lags a bit. Now, I tried. Okay, it's loading up. As you can see here, the frame rates aren't that smooth. To be perfectly honest, you can see that there's some lag, there's some slowdowns, and and yeah. So, so for gaming wise, I believe it's because um, the 2560 by 1536 resolution is slightly harder to drive and the GPU, the Mali T628, I believe, isn't powerful enough and this is apparent and evident uh, in the synthetic benchmark. Uh, we see that the 3D scores on this phone is slightly lower than many other flagship phones out there at the moment. So that is a problem. So for for most gaming apps, uh, for most game games on the Android, uh, it can run it. But uh, for the more graphically intensive ones, uh, it might have some trouble trying to drive everything through the screen. And the problem I have again is that uh, is gaming on the 2560, the high resolution, better than my experience gaming on a full HD display at such a screen size? No, no, it's not any better. And the frame rate drops, the lower frame rate, the, the less smooth experience on the higher resolution display is definitely worse than that gaming on a full HD resolution display. So that's a rather unfortunate thing about this phone, but hey, some manufacturers want to compete based on how many, how dense the screen is. So let them compete uh, and, and let us consumers uh, suffer, I guess you can put it that way. So gaming wise, uh, I'm not too pleased about it, but uh, everything else works perfectly 
fine. Now, in terms of camera, I mentioned before, this is a 20.7 megapixel camera. Does it take better photos? Uh, I believe so, yes. Uh, from what I've taken a look at the photos that uh, I've taken, uh, again, you can download the unedited photos through the full written review. Uh, they look pretty sharp when you zoom in, it's sharper, and uh, the colors reproduce are uh, vibrant. And yeah, that's about it. It also records 4K videos and up to 30 frames per second. And the 4K videos looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I would always recommend people to record at 4K. And if you want to reproduce at uh, 1080p, then go ahead and downscale it in your post production. But uh, the 10 the 1080p is fine, but uh, 4K looks much better. Honestly, uh, after I take a look at both recordings, so camera wise, it's better. It's better than average. It's one of the better few cameras out there, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased about it. For those of you who love taking photos on your mobile device, this might be one of the reasons why you want to get the Meizu MX4 Pro. Now, in terms of uh, the official and community support, now this phone is widely supported by the Chinese community. Uh, there are people developing um, custom ROMs out there for this phone. And in terms of the official support, uh, the manufacturers themselves actually have recently announced that they will introduce the next version of Fly Me for the MX4 as well as MX4 Pro and that will be based off the Android uh, 5.0 Lollipop. So that's a very very nice thing to hear uh, that the manufacturers are actually supporting the phone after its release and that's a great thing to have. So this phone is well supported at the software ends. Now, if you're talking about peripherals as well as accessories, uh, yeah, there are many, many uh, third party people uh, that are actually uh, selling cases for this phone, screen protectors. For example, I got a specific screen protector over here. And yeah, you can get them off eBay, uh, AliExpress or even Taobao. And it will be perfectly fine. You can, you can slap on your favorite color and whatsoever. So, it's well supported. This phone is well supported. Now, before I end off with my conclusion, I would like to just talk a bit more about the software, but not in depth. The in depth one will be right after the conclusion. The software, why the Fly Me OS over here, it's great. You know, I absolutely love the the uh, waking, right? The the gesture wake up. You can see there. I swipe out at bank a blank screen and it appears right at my home screen so i love all these things and yeah fly me os is pretty damn good and if you want to know more about it uh do watch on to the end of the video as i will talk a lot more about it after this conclusion so fly me os a great os so in conclusion time uh the mx4 pro is definitely a high-end phone it has powerful hardware and well, of course, gaming-wise, I already uh, talk a lot about it, that it isn't that good for gaming, but everything else works perfectly fine. So it has powerful hardware. It also has a capable customized OS in the form of FlyMe. And there is also the... Oh, yes, I forgot to talk about it. Uh, the phone has a built-in uh, DAC. That's a digital-to-analog converter as well as a dedicated M. So this is your so-called audio, audio great phone kind of thing. So I did try it out and uh, it, it powers my, my, my headphones pretty well and it sounded great, but uh, I'm no audiophile, so you do take these comments with a pinch of salt. But yes, this phone does, is able to power uh, audio equipments that are of higher impedance, right? So that's because of the dedicated M that's built inside. So this is something that you might want to consider as well. So yeah, the audio-wise is great, camera-wise is great as well, but uh, the main problem is that this phone is not cheap. Now, if you compare the price of this phone with all the features it has, there are just two things, three things going for it that sets it apart slightly from the rest. Number one, it has a fingerprint sensor at the home button, something that you might or might not use. It has a slightly better camera and it has the amazing uh, audio, so they claim, uh, built inside it. So is that 
some things that you are actually looking for and if so i would definitely recommend this phone to you uh it is a great phone for taking photos a better phone rather uh everything's in comparison a better phone for taking photos the audio wise i believe it is better as well but if you are a true audiophile you probably have your own external equipment and yeah that's about it but uh if your budget is slightly tight uh, you might want to take a and and you are focusing purely on uh, performance to value ratio uh, then this phone might not be for the phone for you uh, yeah that's about it right so it's a great phone but i don't i wouldn't recommend it to everyone uh, due to its price so now it's time for for looking at fly me os so i'm going to turn off the lights all right so fl the fly me os this is fly me 4 is a pretty decent os in terms of features as well as general aesthetics so we we'll talk about aesthetics first uh you can look here uh, these are the default uh team or default icons and they look really really good uh, if you do not like this, you can always go and download the one of the many, many different uh, teams out there that users have created. And yeah, it's pretty damn customizable and I absolutely love it. Now, one thing that you might or might prefer or might not is that it does not uh, use the app drawer kind of management. So everything will be on the screens. But uh, you have, of course, your folder management options such as this. And yeah, it looks good, right? So in general aesthetics, it looks very pretty. In terms of features, there are a few things that make this uh, device, or rather this software, so good. Uh, and I absolutely love it. So this is the, the uh, notification thing. Nothing too different. It's just a different looking one but what i wanted to talk to you about is the gesture wake up things so let me show you here so gesture wake up over here you can read here there are a few sorry there are many different gestures that you can draw to launch certain apps so for example you can draw say a a w to open your your microsoft word maybe uh, uh, or, or draw an app or draw a circle to open your camera. Perhaps you can simply set it. You can turn it on, and then you can select the app that you want to launch straight off the bat. So what I have now is that uh, the default we have the default double tap to wake, and we also have things such as pull up to directly unlock it. There we go. So it's very responsive and. I absolutely love it. All this customize, customization options and the gestures. Itself, I find it so useful to be able to access your apps immediately uh, without doing anything when the screen is off. And that is a huge, huge plus point that I absolutely love. Then we have things such as also the, the smart bar. And you will notice here at the bottom here, we have these on-screen controls. And the on-screen controls changes dynamically as the app uh, it changed. For example, if you go into the camera app, you can see over here it becomes all the different uh, camera options such as flash, etc. And when you go into things such as the painter app, you can see here it changes into the, you can create a new, a new painting or the back button. So this smart bar so they call it. it it changes dynamically according to the app now the main problem i have with it is that based practically no other international apps out there supports it right because this we have to understand that fly me os isn't uh, well supported by it's probably supported only within the chinese community and seldom in the international scene so a lot of apps do not support uh this particular smart bar feature and the problem comes when say you open an app say reddit and and you see there is this option to hide the smart bar there's this option to hide the smart bar and what you can do then is that um um 
if the app doesn't support, sorry, if the app doesn't support the smart bar, you can automatically hide it and then you will not have any on-screen controls. So what you can do then is that you can actually, this is a very cool thing, you can tap the home button if you set this setting, tap the home button to go back or tap and race forward to go back. So it uses, I believe it uses the sensor on the home button to detect that you are actually holding it and then you can pull up to signify a back button and that is something that is very very cool indeed and very very helpful uh, you can see here this is the option uh, as you can see inte intelligently hide smart bar and we also have the over here the home key touch so you can actually press uh, tap it and then go back I perhaps can show you back to launcher I tapped it I didn't actually press it I just tapped it and it goes back to home which is really cool and a feature that I absolutely love and it's only possible because of the uh, fingerprint sensor I believe on the home button. So talking about fingerprints, here we have a fingerprint similar to the iOS one. Uh, you can use it to unlock your phone, you can use it to pay but the payment option is basically Ali Pay, I believe. So you probably have would not use it but uh, it's a very very nice thing you can use it to unlock you can use it as a password management kind of thing very very nice feature to have now the next thing i want to talk about is the uh nix let's see here uh what we call the smart touch over here now the smart touch is basically a assistive button you can see over here and what it does is that tapping on it will allow you to uh, access or, or performing gestures of it will allow you to access different functions. For example, you can tap it, uh, tap it uh, to the left, swipe to the left to go to the previous app. You can cycle through apps. Then you swipe it to the right to go to the right one, which is really cool. You can actually swipe up to go back to the home screen or minimize the app at the moment and there is even a cooler one that is so useful for one hand operations double tapping it double tapping it shifts down whatever is at the top so you can access it so for example people with uh, smaller hands so you cannot reach right for example me i can reach the clock all i have to do is double tap clock there we go simple as that and it's very useful i can find it many people using this particular feature as well and the feature to go back as well is also so, so useful. And this is a very, very nice touch by uh, Meizu themselves for their FlyMe OS. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, FlyMe OS is fantastic. I re I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, beside the bloatware, which you can delete. There's a lot of bloatware you can see here. I categorize all of them here for you to see. And... Besides that, uh, the default apps like the Painter apps, etc. is pretty standard. But it looks good and the functions, the features is fantastic. I absolutely love, Ooh, look at this. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I'm just going to show you again. There we go. Amazing. So yeah, FlyMe OS, this is the FlyMe 4. Uh, hopefully when the Lollipop version arrives, uh, I can do a review on that as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is the FlyMe OS. I already said before, it's great. It's versatile. It looks pretty and I absolutely love it. And that's about it, really. Uh, that's the end of my review of the MX4 Pro. Now, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. You can PM me as well, private message me. Uh, do read the full written review for some of the things that I may not have actually talked about in the video review. The link to the full written review will be in the description bar. Otherwise, do subscribe to the channel for more of such videos. And I'll see you guys again very soon.